Okay, today we're gonna to take Marcus, which is our Wi-Fi self-watering pot, which uh, is watering our indoor Japanese maple on soil moisture. Um, we've had Marcus running for well over a year, running different things. We've had this maple in here uh, uh, probably about a month now. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade him. We're gonna give him a motion detector and a buzzer alarm so he can uh, monitor motion and send alerts um, at certain points during the day or if I, if I go out of town, I wanna be able to know if anything's moving inside the house. So there's some pretty cool things we can do there. But basically we're gonna turn our self-watering plant, uh, we're gonna put a hidden motion detector in there and turn them into a, a home sentry bot. And we're probably gonna end up putting a few around here. And this is not necessarily a, a supplement for your security system by any means, but this is a, a tool you can use for peace of mind to know uh, if anything has entered your home. Um, you know, if you're not there, you can set up scheduling, which is really cool. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to do it real quick. Here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to rip off his board on the back. Okay, so I've got our board up here, uh, the Adoge IoT board. We were running in our self-watering pot, and I've also got a buzzer alarm mount kit as well as this waterproof, water-resistant motion detector. Um, these are made very similar to the soil moisture detectors we make. If you guys want to make these yourselves, here's a video on how you can do that. Otherwise, we sell these in the IoT store. It's got a a very uh, water resistant, waterproof, dual walled heat shrink uh, protective coat around it. And on the inside, there's actual, it's actually glue line to further seal it out. Let me see if you can see that. Um, but So we heat that up and seal that. And this is after we can formal coat the board uh, to protect the components. So all we need to do is basically just plug in our sound sensor now. We'll get that, or our, excuse me, our buzzer alarm now. And we'll get that plugged in uh, and hooked up mounted to the board. And then we'll mount the motion detector when we actually position in the plant. But we just plug two up. One goes in digital IO1 and the other goes in digital IO2. So you're looking at these three pins and these three pins. And the way that the digitals plug in there are with the green wire on the left. So that would be digital IO2. And that would be digital IO1. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get the buzzer mounted on this board. We got our level switch here, so what we kind of want to do is make sure that this is going to be clear of our pumps too, so I'll go ahead and put it like that. And you can tighten this nut at the bottom to get it tightened. So we've got it tightened now. Uh, we just used uh, some pliers and twisted that nut on the bottom. And then what we can do is take our digital connector Get your one in plugged in, and then what you can do is just go ahead and plug your other one in. We're going to come up under the board, um, plug it into digital IO2. So our buzzer will be on digital IO2. We've got digital IO1 open for our uh, motion detector. And here's our level switch, and this is where our pump goes, and our moisture sensor right here. So um, let's go ahead and get this plugged back on the board. So that's it. So now our buzzer alarm is installed into our self-watering pot and we just need to feed our motion detector through the way we want to and position it and we're going to plug that in again right there on digital IO1. So that's how that's going to sit. So let's go ahead and get this plugged up into our device. Let's put our board back in the enclosure and let's get the wires all plugged up. First we'll just go ahead and take the water pump Put that right in the motor switch channel one. We'll take our level switch, plug him into our digital pull up channel one, and then our moisture sensor will plug into our analog port. Okay, so now our self watering pot is plugged up with our buzzer alarm intact, and all we have to do is install our motion detector. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to feed this. connector through where our tube comes through and we're going to connect it to the board down here so as you can see we're just going to go right into digital pull up or digital io channel one and make sure the green wire is on the left with the black wire on the right so you can see on the connector there 
Now we just need to put our motion detector where we want it. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to have it angle out this way. We're going to drill a 3 8 inch hole into the side of our pot where we're going to go ahead and have our uh, motion detector stick out of to make it as discreet as possible. This is the same size hole we drilled for our tube back here that's coming up into our pot right there. So, okay, we'll go ahead and get this fitted in. Okay, I've got it installed. It looks, uh, looks pretty discreet. Okay, so this is our pot from up top. Um, yeah, this is definitely a discreet looking uh, motion detector that we've installed. We've gone ahead and put the wires all underneath so you really can't see it. Put some more covering over that if you'd like. Okay, let's get it programmed and tested. Okay, so I'm going to create a profile to add support for the motion detector. Um, I'm in my self-watering pot profile that I created earlier. I changed the name to support motion detect Sentry Alarm. Um, but if you, we want to just recap. So we've got a 12 volt uh, DC water pump that we've got assigned here. It's on pin 16. It's this first motor switch channel one plugged in right here on the board. We've got it set to trigger mode and so it's going to be triggered by something else. That's basically what by trigger means. And when it's triggered, it's going to run for 20 seconds. Down here we've got the water level sensor switch. It's positioned right above the pump. It's going to let us know that the device reservoir is empty via an alert message when it triggers and it's going to protect our pump. So basically when this triggers it'll prevent our pump from running as well. Down here we have our analog soil moisture sensor. This is what's going to trigger our watering. We've got it set to trigger at water moisture level 6 and to water to moisture level 7 and it's going to tr attempt to do that two times to reach that level. So that'll water this pump which is set to run 20 seconds each time it's triggered. This is what we started with. We added a motion detector on one channel and an alarm on another. I believe we added the motion detector on digital IO1 so what we're going to do is we're going to have it on a single detect trigger so it's going to trigger once to send an, send an alarm. We're not going to send an alert on trigger but we will set that up when we leave town but for testing we're, we're not going to actually uh, send an alert every time it triggers. Um, but what we are going to do is you know, we're not going to put a trigger delay as well but we are going to set a trigger action to it. But let's go ahead and deploy this first and then down here we'll go ahead and set up our um, our digital output. So this one is going to be our our switch or our, our um, buzzer alarm and we're just going to put a trigger high to turn it on when it triggers and depending on how long you want your alarm for we're going to do a three second trigger. Alternatively uh, you, you if you did an alarm you probably want to run it longer um, but you could run two motion detectors here if you wanted to do that too and then both have them both trigger alarms where you could have more or less a silent sentry as opposed to something that's audible. But I think having a couple of these guys that are audible that are blaring a loud buzzer uh, would be a nice deterrent. So um, we're just going to go ahead and put that on. We'll do it three seconds for test. That'll help you know me get a good idea of what range it's kind of working at. So that's pretty much it. Oh, well, now we got to go back to our motion detector and let's actually set it to be triggered by this pin we just set. So the digital output. That's what it's going to trigger. So. Uh, not triggered by, but when the motion detector triggers, it'll trigger this pin. And if we wanted to do like a double detect or multi-detect, we could do a multi-detect and, and say, okay, the motion detector has to trigger X times within uh, its 20 second threshold. So if you wanted to be sure something's there, you could do two times in 20 seconds. And the motion detector takes about three or four seconds to reset between triggers. So you could theoretically do maybe like a four trigger multi-detect if you wanted to. But make sure that both of those are deployed and our device is going to get its new profile. If we don't want to wait, we can just reset the device if we don't want to wait for it to update. So we're going to go do that now and test this guy out. So this is our self-watering pot upgraded to a security sentry. We're testing it out now. We're just going to take a step and it sees us already. And we're a good wait distance away. The door's right there. So anybody that comes through... Um, yeah, it's even seeing us at this angle over here. So let's kind of walk backwards. Yeah, it's got a good range on it. So it's nice, it's discreet. You don't necessarily have to do a loud buzzer like that. Like I say, you can just have it really discreet and just kind of report back to the server and send you, set it up to send an alert when it detects motion. So these are gonna be really cool when we head out on vacation. 
um, taking care of the plants as well as giving us a little peace of mind. You can log in remotely and kind of see what the data looks like. I'll show you what this data looks like on the uh, on the dashboard. It's going to start logging this data here in a minute. So I'll show you that right now. I'm looking at Marcus. And so we've got his profile set to self-watering pot motion detect uh, sentry alarm. He's been running for a few hours like that. We could basically set him to a regular self-watering pot and then apply a dynamic profile for the sentry to come on like if we were at work or out of town. Um, actually, we just set it to this if we were out of town, but we could apply a dynamic one if we wanted to come on during certain times of the day when we weren't home regularly. But looking at the 24-hour or one-day device history, um, as you can see, we've already got almost you know a little more than three hours of data. And starting at these, this is the motion detector data plot. And starting at uh, 5 p.m. from 5 to 6, we had 63 triggers. From 6 to 7, we had 47 triggers. From 7 to 8, we've had 34 triggers, and it's 8:41 now. We've only got 16 triggers, so you can see the activity in the living room is settling down significantly, and that's just representative of what's going on in the house. Down here, we've got the actual digital I.O. This is the buzzer trigger that we've got set. So as you can see, we've got the respective number of triggers. These were triggered every time the motion detector was triggered. And this is the, the amount of actual seconds it was triggered for. So total of 189 seconds because each time it was triggered three seconds. So there's 141 seconds, 102, and 48. Um, so th that's the data. This will obviously keep collecting as it's doing its stuff. Just want to show you how, how cool this stuff really is. So what's really cool is in within a matter of minutes, we took this self-watering pot and uh, basically just transformed it into an entirely different animal. This is kind of gives you an idea of what you guys can do with uh, an Adoja device. Um, those of you who've been watching some of our videos, I hope you're starting to understand the power of um, the platform. And, you know, I hope you guys are all having fun with your devices. And uh, we appreciate uh, your business and all your feedback. So just keep it coming. And thank you very much. Okay. All right. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. All right. Thanks, guys.